Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for listening. I'm Jeff Weisenberger, the editor and publisher of Modern Steel Construction Magazine, which, as you know, is AISC's monthly publication. And we're at the Steel Conference NASCC in San Antonio. And with me is owner Avchi, who is the assistant professor and Herbert P. Drips faculty fellow at West Virginia University. He is being awarded this year with a 2024 Terry Pisha Early Career Faculty Award, which recognizes those who build a brighter future by supporting tomorrow's leaders. He's being honored for his exceptional promise and continued excellence in structural steel research, teaching, and service to the industry. So thank you so much for being here with me, Honor. Um, it's a pleasure. The pleasure is mine. Thank you very much for having me. Very good. Well, hey, I always like to start from the beginning. So maybe could you talk a little bit about where you're from and where you grew up? Yes, I'm originally from Turkey. I grew up in Ankara, Turkey, uh, the capital city of Turkey, and had my undergraduate BS degree from Middle East Technical University mm -hmm. in Ankara. Then right after that, I moved to United States for master's. I had my master's and PhD degrees at Virginia Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, then I... I worked in structural engineering firms in Las Vegas, Nevada, then moved to New York City. I was really fortunate to be part of signature projects like World Trade Center, Second Avenue Subway. So it was it, it was an excellent time to be in New York City because uh, the 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 project that projects that I was working on is it was like I, it was diverse. I did low rise, I did mid rise. Mm -hmm. High rise, below ground, above ground, seismic, windy, uh, in the U.S., overseas. So I was very fortunate to be part of different projects, uh, steel buildings and all all kinds of other materials. So after that, I wanted to go back to academia, and we moved to Qatar. I was at Qatar University for about five years. Okay. Then we decided to come back to U.S., and we came back to U.S., and I was at non-tenure track faculty member at Iowa State for two years. Okay. And I got hired at West Virginia University about two years ago. And here I am. Wow. <laughs> That's a good wrap up. You, you've been, yeah, you've kind of been all over. I do want to ask, I mean, I definitely want to talk about your academic career in a second, but if you don't mind, just briefly, you, it sounds like you did a lot of different work in New York City. Was there any project that you worked on when you were there that sticks out in particular, either is the one that you're most proud of or the one that gave you the most headaches? Or And sometimes I know that's that's the same project. Yes. I mean, I cannot name one, but there are multiple. Obviously, the World Trade Center mm -hmm. project is a is a signature project. It's just a lot of people, a lot of engineers, technicians, architects. It was a large team. And that's the I'm really proud to be part of a project like that. And the Oculus design that we had uh, at the train station mm -hmm. right outside World Trade Center. I, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with the site. Oh, yeah. Very, very familiar. So the, the train station there, uh, trying to remember the name of the train station, is just a large structure is this the cat the calatrava yeah the, yes. yeah that that project i can't remember the name either but i've been in there a few times yes yeah, so stunning. there's a platform that has a huge cantilever mm -hmm. and it had some vibration research to be done okay so i'm really proud to be part of that 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 project as well it's just the, it can't cantilevers out about like more than 60 feet yeah if if the memory serves so that was also that was also very interesting and, and signature project that that I'm I'm really proud of. I I did work on about ten U.S. embassies. Okay. Uh, the U.S. embassy in Skopje, Macedonia. Okay. I I spent a lot of time on that U.S. embassy in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And the different U.S. embassy though is just the one in uh, U.S. embassy in London where we had more like about 30, 35 feet high entry level. It's just progressive collapse design. I did not work on that project, but I was part of the team who won the the project to the company. I was at Weidlinger Associates at the time. Okay. Yeah. So these several projects. I mean, the downtown Phoenix Sheraton Hotel. Okay. Is is also one of them. The McCarran International Terminal Terminal Three. When I was in Las Vegas, it was was really interesting projects. Oh yeah, very good. Yeah, and were you at the keynote? Uh, you were obviously you were up on stage. That's a silly question, but yeah, I, that was an interesting uh, fact that the speaker mentioned about how McCarran Airport can bring in something like six hundred thousand people every day. And I've been there several times. It's not the biggest airport, but 
they uh, they're very efficient with it. Yes, yeah, I didn't know actually. <clears throat> I was surprised at the number. I didn't know it was that unique, but it's yeah, it's tremendous. I, I was very lucky to be part of teams, design teams like that. So it's just hearing things like that. It just makes me proud. It's just we are serving the community, obviously. Yeah, and people just come and go, and they don't necessarily know us, but the fact that they've been through these structures that we worked on. It's, it's, it's a good feeling. Yeah, I can imagine. So, you know, going fast forwarding to academia, what made you want to get back into academia? Excellent question. I always wanted to come back to academia because I, I just wanted to have this connection with the students. And I felt like if, well, you've been there and done that. And I felt like this is the time for me to go back and teach this to the students in the, in the right way. Mm -hmm. So, and... I'm a big believer of hands-on experience and being in the design office, just witnessing all these problems, let's say, design problems. We are, we are engineers, right? We are, we are there to solve problems. And, mm -hmm. and it's, not, it's not like what you see on textbook. Uh, the, when, you, when you're in the ball game, you see different perspective of things and you feel like, okay, you know what? It's just we need to find a common ground here for the client for the for the strength side of things for other limit states and why for example vibration serviceability side of things mm -hmm. so it makes a big difference it's just long story short i just wanted to be there to transfer all this knowledge and experience mm -hmm. to the students and to be honest with you it's 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 the ultimate job satisfaction for me it's, i think it's more important than all these publications and citations, it's just the ultimate job satisfaction is just to be able to see, pass this on to students mm -hmm. because they're right there. They're looking, they're looking at you. They're ready to learn. And when they feel like, you know what, this guy was part of this NFL stadium design and maybe, maybe I can learn something from him. It really makes me happy when I, when I'm able to, when I feel like I was able to pass this information to the students because at that time I feel like all this experience, all this headache and all that energy mm -hmm. uh, now it has a better meaning because I'm able to pass it on to students. That's the reason why I wanted to come back to academia primarily. Sure. And secondary side of things is I'm, I was really passionate about research mm -hmm. and the things that I've been doing. It's just, for example, we are looking at, I started with floor vibration serviceability and I switched uh, to structural health monitoring in a sense because it's using the acceleration data, the mm -hmm. vibration data that we collect from structures. And after that, I, I've been working on bringing machine learning and deep learning tools to apply what we learned in structural health monitoring to another uh, stage for structural damage detection. Mm -hmm. So just by looking at the vibration response of structures and building some baseline uh, databases, we could just go ahead and just by acceleration information, we could detect damage, localize damage, quantify damage on various type of structures. Mm -hmm. And our, our several studies on this topic has been cited a lot only because I believe it was one of the pioneer research using all this acceleration information with machine learning tools. And I could tell because we were getting a lot of questions. And uh, at the time, uh, I told my student that maybe we should have a website, sure. a structuraldamagedetection.com, and maybe we could mm -hmm. use all this database in this website. And we'll have less questions from all over the world, like China, India, US, Australia. Sure. And guess what? When we had this website, mm -hmm. we had like, we tripled the questions coming all, <laughs> all over from the world. And our website is there. The, we, we wanted to share what we are using. And mm -hmm. it's always interesting to see what people when people take a look at the data and they say, oh, what do you mean here? What do you mean there? So we, we try to make it better and better and sure. we are happy that it's been cited a lot. Yeah, that's that's funny you say that. You you put this website out there to sort of take a little, not pressure, sure. but you know, to kind of save some time for yourselves and put the answers out there, but then it generated more questions. But I think that's a good thing. It's 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 good that it's uh, people have been engaged with it. I just want to ask a quick question about you know getting back into academia, and I think it's you hit the nail on the head. It's a it's a perfect scenario when you can you can come back to a classroom with all sorts of real world experience under your belt. And then, like you said, 
you, not just not just saying, well, I was in the field and this is why I know these things, but also being able to point at those types of structures that you mentioned, and that gives them something to aspire to. Absolutely. But, yeah. <laughs> but what was it like, though? The, the first, like, when w- was it intimidating the first time you got up in front of a lecture hall or uh, you know, a room full of students? Always. I mean, I to me, you have to have this adrenaline, right? So you have to feel it. You have to be passionate about it. So you're in this ball game. You should be excited that, okay, the ball is being thrown at me and should, am I going to be able to catch it? So I did catch it in practice. Am I going to be able to catch it on Sunday night sure. when it matters? Right. Uh, from that perspective, it's like, okay, I know how to do this, but it's like I look at teaching from this perspective. Let's say you have $1 million and I really need $100. Mm-hmm. And if you are that rich and when I need $100, if you cannot give it to me, so it doesn't really mean a lot to me that the fact that you have $1 million right now in your bag, mm-hmm. right? So I look at it this way. I have all this information. So when the students ask about it, am I going to be able to tell the story to them in an understandable way? Are they going to understand? Mm -hmm. Are they going to, are we going to click? Are we going to be in resonance so that everything I've been through now, it's going to work out for them. It's really important for me. And to be able to come that position, I think it's critical that you prepare yourself to be in the classroom and you should you should be you should be under pressure a little bit so that okay you should be ready when when the time has come you are, you start teaching and students you should have their attention mm-hmm. that's not enough on top of that you should be able to pass this information to them and that's not even that's not enough either at the end when you have an example problem they should be able to follow what you just described it's it's not that easy sure so and i i i I consider myself very lucky because I, I got good comments so far in multiple countries and different cultures, different backgrounds of people. I got I got good feedback so far as far as the teaching side of things are concerned. Mm-hmm. The research side of things is we are focusing on also have good feedback and this award that uh, that we got today. It's 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 really exciting. It just puts more pressure on me to be able to do better things. Hopefully. But, but I like this. I, I, I like to be part of teaching and research at the same time. So, Sure. Can you tell me, speaking of the research side of things, what's coming down the pike? What's the next big project that you're working on? Or, or maybe even do you have like a, something that you're hoping, like a dream project, so to speak? The one that we have right now is a large group of prestigious researchers. I'm really, be, I'm really happy to be part of the Fast Floor team. I'm, I'm learning yes. a lot from the uh, PIs. And as a matter of fact, the structures are becoming very lighter. They are very slender now. Um, And things are different because the vibration serviceability side of things are becoming critical. When when things are prone to vibrate, even if if you get the job done for strength and other limit states for deflections, let's say, Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily necessarily good enough. Uh, when, when you are sitting in front of your computer and when somebody walks by and your screen shakes, mm-hmm. it's not the most pleasant situation, right? right? It's just you're focusing and your focus has been disrupted because of people walking or any other kind of vibration. Mm-hmm. So um, it has become a limit state mm-hmm. and because we have less damping on structures nowadays. If you think about structure where you have very thick reinforced concrete sure. slab and at the same time you have tons of tons of shelves and papers and everything. It's a, it's a very congested floor. Right. You have a lot of damping. But right now, if you look at the electronic offices, mm-hmm. you don't see much furniture. You don't see bookshelves. Everything mm-hmm. is in your hard drive. Right. And guess what? That means you have less damping. When you have less damping, you are more prone to vibrations. So True. it's just becoming very critical because I'll give you an imp- imp- interesting fact. It's estimated that the global floor area in the world will double by 2060. Wow. It's going to be a total of 2.6 trillion square feet of new floor added to global stock. What's going to be driving that? What sector? Uh, Well, there's going to be a lot of construction, mm -hmm. not necessarily steel, all kinds of different materials. People want it fast. The population is increasing rapidly. Right. And... And when you put a new floor, you not only worry about the 
strength side of things, mm -hmm. you also worry about multiple things like vibration serviceability, acoustics. Right. And these are important items right now. These are the new, uh, new, new items in the ball game. Mm -hmm. So this research is really, is uh, I'm really passionate about. I'm also focusing on other machine learning, deep learning side of things, um, some um, new materials to suppress vibrations, okay. um, new structural damage detection methods. I'm really passionate about. Uh, I have good team members. Um, good students, so everything, everything, everything is in, everything is in the way that it's supposed to be right now. Very good, yeah. And you make a good point. No, I, I asked a kind of a silly question, but yeah, when, when I asked, when I asked which what kind of like part like parts of uh, what of the building economy, what what types of facilities are going to be responsible? I mean, as you said, it's just population growth is a huge part. So basically, it's going to be everything. It sounds like. I mean, we're going to need more offices, more homes, more data centers, more everything. Exactly, um, yeah. and. And now everybody, because of that, everybody wants it fast. They don't have time. Right. People don't have patience. Right. Right. And once you rush, though, it doesn't give you the luxury to miss important items. Because I believe right now, understanding the dynamic behavior of engineering structures is often overlooked, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And structural dynamics enables us to design for operational environments and also design for serviceability. And in my research, I'm trying to blend the fundamental structural dynamics knowledge with machine learning tools that mm -hmm. has enabled my research team to create novel structural damage detection tools that can detect, localize, quantify unseen damage. So not only that, we are, we are talking about minimal damage, right? right? It's just not it's just not visible to naked eye. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, we can now even generate potential future damage scenarios for any given structure. Mm. And we transfer the damage information we learned on one structure to another structure. We call it uh, transfer learning. Okay. So these are all cool stuff that we are working on right now. And uh, the, we are always after the next novel idea in structural health monitoring, structural mm -hmm. damage detection. And we, like I said, we are very passionate about it. Yeah, very good. And I think, you know, you're talking about fast floor and what you were saying about all the new, you know, flooring. We It's kind of funny when you think about it. That's a staggering number that how, I don't know how many trillions of square feet you just said, but um and people needing it fast. So I think the branding on that, you know, calling it fast floor is a, is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Need for speed, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> it just, it's just a perfect fit. So you, you know, it's, you started in, in Turkey, you've been in various you know, places around the U.S. and then also in the Middle East, and and you've landed currently in Morgantown. Remind me how long you've been there, and you know what what are what are some of your favorite things about living there? I mean, I know it's a very different place from every everywhere else you've lived. It is, yes. I was I was at uh, Virginia Tech in grad school, so it's very similar to Blacksburg, mm -hmm. Virginia, uh, Virginia, West Virginia, very close. Sure. So Morgantown is a cosmopolitan area. It's it is like a college town, but mm -hmm. we have two now with the addition of the children's hospital. We have three hospitals in, okay. the, in, the, in the town. So it, it is green mm -hmm. and um, it is beautiful. We like it. We like the students. We like the environment. It's very embracing and we appreciate. Uh, I, I really appreciate. I have a tenure track job now and yep. doing my best uh, 120% to get the job done as far as teaching and research is concerned and the service is concerned and this this award I'm I should say I'm truly grateful to AISC for creating this opportunity and I'm really honored to be chosen for this and I will continue to do my best and go the extra mile to fulfill the expectations because this award comes with maybe this recognition but it's it brings a lot of responsibility as well and I will make sure this will benefit our students uh, our community no, that's great to hear. Yeah, congratulations again, and Thank and I think I think you make a really great point. You know, it, it, awards like this or any any big awards are just are not just about resting on your laurels. It's it, it makes you want to be better, and that's a good thing. Exactly. So, hey, owner, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Other than no, that, this I'll just is do I really outro. appreciate this. Thank you very much. I really, uh, I really enjoy this. Thanks for doing this. I mean, you guys are behind the scenes, and you're doing the real, real deal work. Well, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we definitely, and we like to not just uh, recognize people, winners on the stage with some photos. That's like, this is why we like to have these conversations because we want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, I love and, it. And, and hear love about it. your uh, contributions to the industry. So, Honor, thank you very much for being here. Congratulations again. And we will talk to you soon. Thanks thank for you. having me. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs>